Hi, welcome to Kick My Asana Day 3. My name is Melanie Dawn. Let's go. We'll start on our backs. Supta Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together, knees falling wide and apart. Inner thigh begins to let go to gravity. If, as it lets go to gravity, you don't like the feeling or the sensation is too much, you can take your hands into little fists and just place them underneath the thighs for some support. If you have blocks or pillows, blocks or pillows can do the same thing under the knee, mid thigh. If you're not using your hands for support, you can drop the arms down along side body, turn the palms up as a gesture of receiving. And I'll tell you something about this <laughs> practice of receiving is that today has been an incredibly hard day and I am so ready to open my heart up to receive, to turn my palms up as a gesture to source, the universe, whatever God you subscribe to, whatever faith you have, that I am here and I am opening to receiving. And with every breath that enters my belly, I drop more and more into the energy of receiving. I'm watching where I'm holding my breath. If I'm not allowing breath in, I'm softening those areas of the body. I welcome in all the deliciousness that a yoga practice brings, whether you're here just strictly physically or you come for something deeper. Your level of a connection with the practice really is an internal commitment. Where am I focused? What do I need? And we'll open our practice with three powerful breaths, breathing in through the nose, filling into the belly, expanding the whole torso, rib cage, clavicle, hold. Big sigh out. <sighs> Breathing in. Breath travels through the nose. Touches in the depth of the belly. Welcomed in the rib cage. Held in the upper portion of the chest. Hold. Release. <sighs> Breath in, slow, steady. Allow the belly to welcome the breath. Hold. Double sigh out. <sighs> we'll take the hands to the outsides of the thighs, bring the knees into touch. And you can heel toe the feet to the outside edges of the mat just to counter uh, that hip externalization. And then knees may come. Windshield washer type style movement from side to side. I just realized I was like feeling the cloth, my clothing, and I wonder um, the strength of this mic. So we'll see today. Come back to center, hug the knees over top of the heart. Here's where things get a little heated. So the knee is going to go into a 90 degree angle shape and it's going to stay there. Knees are over top of hips and I have to place my hands just underneath my low back, underneath my bum, uh, in order to get the knees stacked over top of the hips. My feet are flexed and my shins are parallel with the ground. The shape of your leg does not change at all. All that's happening is you're moving from your hip socket. On your exhale, drop your right heel down to your mat to touch. Inhale to bring it back up. Exhale, left heel taps down, touch. Inhale, rise. Another side. And you'll flow with your breath, using your exhales to drop down to ensure you're not holding your breath and your inhales to bring you back through center. Okay. 
And we'll take two more breaths. Lastly, landing left heel down to the mat last. No rush. And then from here, kick, uh, bring the, the knees back towards the heart. And here I probably shouldn't have, uh, I'm being quite nurturing to myself today. I'm proud of it. Um, I shouldn't have probably took my hands away, but I really felt the need to hug my heart. We'll uh, put the hands underneath the hips. Stack the heels over top of your hips now. The legs are straight, knees don't bend as well as straight as they can be. Uh, exhale, right heel drops down, leg stays straight. Left heel, hopefully mine is at least somewhat stacked over top of the hip. <laughs> and then an inhale to rise. Exhale, left heel reaches for the end of your mat, touches down. And then inhale to come back up. Repeating, following your breath, supporting your back, watching for any back arching. Um, we want to try to keep the backs connected to your mat as possible. Once your left heel is done last, come back up through center. And this time we really can hug the knees over top of our heart and take a nice roll from side to side. And eventually find either a roll all the way over and coming up tabletop or palms on the back of thighs and rolling head to crown until you can come up and make your way into tabletop. From tabletop, I'm going to take my left knee to center and send my right heel back straight and through the right leg. The right leg is coming up about hip height, and then left arm comes up shoulder height, thumb is up. From here, you can use a breath to open, so hand can move to the left, foot to the right, or stay exactly as you were. Come back through center, inhale. Exhale, bend through the knee and elbow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Knee to elbow, crunch. Inhale, reach. Exhale, hug in. Breathe in, reach. Empty, hug. Last one, squeeze, 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 squeeze. And then you'll send your right toes back, straighten through the leg. So one knee is bent, one leg is straight, right leg is straight. You're gonna kick your left toes off of your mat or towards that general direction. Left palm stays connected, strong, and you're pushing down through the shoulder, so you're not dumping into the shoulder here. Your back heel drops down as right hip crawls over top of left hip, and then the right hand starts reaching for the sky as the chest opens. You are in a modified side plank. Option to go into full side plank or lift your top leg. I'm doing neither. We wanna make sure that your left knee is stacked underneath the left hip. If you feel like it might be behind it slightly, bring the knee underneath. Firm through the low belly, so hug the mula banda lock up, so perineum banda lock. Hug it up into the uh, abdomen and come up gate pose. So this is a really strong core. Right hand extends down the right leg, left fingertips up and over. Whole time I'm thinking about my core is locked, but breath is still flowing. Option to pad under that left knee too. I've already done this. This is why I'm having such a great day. And I used the pillow last time, but I'm cutting out stuff this time. Last breath. And inhale back through center. And left fingertips touch down. Right hand reaches up and over for a side plank. Inhale, rise up. Side bend over to the left or right. Inhale, center. 
Side bend over to the left. Inhale, center. Side bend right. Inhale, center. And both hands will come down to your mat. And you'll step back. Super fun surprise, plank. Option to have knees down. Planking for three. Two. One, downward facing dog. Left leg comes up. As you exhale, hug your knee to your heart, step your foot forward, come up warrior two. Warrior two, reverse warrior, you've seen this a couple of practices already. Back hand drops, front hand reaches up. Warrior two. Here's where things get juicy, but you, you decide. Front forearm, front thigh. Back hand straight up out of the shoulder, side angle. Extended side angle, fingers reach overhead. Those are your options. Another option is two stage full abs. Bottom hand reaches out, but right shoulder doesn't drop in. It's up and looking. So the heart's still trying to look at the sky. We're leaning into the back body. Wherever you are, take your gaze down to your mat, bring both hands down to your mat, and step back, downward facing dog. Woo wee! Downward facing dog, right leg lifts this time, three legged dog, stepping forward, warrior two. <laughs> I just realized we still have to do all the tabletop series, other side. We'll get there. Warrior two. Front palm flips, backhand drops, reverse your warrior. Back through center, warrior two. Options, guys. We always have options. Stay front forearm, front thigh, just in side angle here. Beautiful, core is still strong, working hard, or extended side angle, taking the fingertips overhead, bringing a little more uh, tone to the core, or bottom hand like a beach ball, holding a beach ball. Wherever you are, gaze looks down at your mat. Both hands touch down. Stepping back, plank. Here's where I lost it. <laughs> and knees come down for tabletop. This time, right knee travels to the center. Left leg kicks back. Heel comes up hip height. Right arm comes forward. Option to expand. Right hand to the, to the right. Left leg to the left. back through center, breath in. This time, guys, let's hug it in, knee to elbow. <sighs> that was a lot slicker. Inhale to extend, empty hug. Breath in, reach. And hug and squeeze for the last one. And both hand and knee come down. Modified side plank. So the left toes kick back, pressing through the heel. So the left leg is straight, right knee is still down. We'll take our right toes behind us off the mat slightly. Back heel drops down. Left hip starts to climb up and over top of right hip. I may even come onto my fingertips or stay pushing down through the palm, making sure I don't dump into my shoulder. Then I'm gonna take my arms, sweep it up as though I'm opening up my rib cage towards the ceiling, the sky, the stars, and breathing. Option for Full plank or full side plank or lifted leg. Again, doing none. Making sure that the right knee is stacked underneath right hip if you need to move it at all, I may. There we go. 
strong belly. I'm going to start to float my right fingertips away from my mat, slow and controlled as I come up gate pose. Fingers reach over shoulders. Exhale, left hand slides down left leg and right fingertips reach up and over. Whew. This knee does not like this, so I'm going to pad real quick. I'm pretty sure we stayed here for about three to four business years on the other side. <laughs> so just making sure we keep it even. Last breath. Inhale to center, strong belly, strong core, right fingertips touch down, left sweep up and over, and maybe pressing the pelvis forward slightly. Inhale, rise and side bend to the left. Center, side bend to the right. Center, side bend left. Center, fingertips land to the right. And taking a look down, Bring both, or bring your hand down, and left knee comes down, finds tabletop. From tabletop, we'll go into, hmm, you know what? Let's just sit on our left hip. We've done enough. Sit on your or left hip, bring your right ankle and cross it over left thigh. This will work for some people. Others may need to take a seat on a pillow just to lift the hips slightly. Some people may not even be able to get their leg all the way there. You can always undo the shoelace as much as you need. Either leg, it depends for everyone, it's different. So this is stop number one. Wanna go further, take it into a spinal twist. Wrap your left elbow across your right thigh, drop your right fingertips behind you and take your gaze over your back shoulder. It's kind of an interesting place to start to feel into where you breathe. It's also a nice place to close your eyes if you have that space and you feel safe enough. We'll unwind the elbow if you're in the twist, come back forward. Extend your right leg out to the side, straighten it. So then the sole of the left foot is just lying nicely in the inner thigh. The sternum will turn so that the knee is the compass. The sternum wants to find the knee. Hands reach up. And as you exhale, you'll fold forward and whether you come down flat, flat back, which will work into the back line of the leg, or a rounded spine, which will stretch through the low back, either or, whatever feels best for you, whatever is speaking to you. I like to keep my foot flexed, toes pulling back towards the shins, heel pressing away. And we'll come back up through center. Left leg extends out to the side so that we're in a wide-legged uh, forward fold. Walk your hands forward, tip your uh, belly button down towards the earth, and either keep head up, gaze forward, or tuck the chin towards the heart. Uh, soft feet, apparently you're more prone to injury if your feet are soft, so flex the foot before you go all the way in, before you go to your depth. Open for debate as everything changes always. Listening to your body, walk your hands back. This time, uh, right knee bends and the sole of that foot connects to your left inner thigh. Sternum locks on to kneecap, rib cage twists, arms rise, and folding forward. I really like to listen to music while I'm doing yoga, and I added a playlist on day two. It's one of my favorites. You can take a look at it if you like. It's 
slowly start to bring yourself back up. And now we're gonna cross left ankle over right thigh. I need to take my heel away from my glute a little bit before that happens. And then hug in. Option to stay just like this, spine is tall, straight, or left fingertips behind left hip, right elbow across left thigh. I know home practices can be challenging and I'm so grateful that you all are here and um, I'm so grateful that we even have this opportunity. I truly am. I've been pushing it aside for a while, but I'm really happy to be here. Take your last two breaths. And we'll come back through center. If you have a pillow underneath, you can take it out now as the feet unwind. And we'll call it a practice. Nothing dramatic is the closing. Um, just a gentle lay back, a soft opening of the heart, melting of muscle, body into bone, connection of heart to breath, breath to body, and body to the mat and the earth. Aware of the presence of spirit through each breath. A willingness for each breath. And one last final big fill up before we go into complete stillness. Breathe through the nose, fill through the belly. Empty. Eyes can softly close if they haven't already. If you feel safe, stay as long as you like. Namaste.